grade 11s, in this lesson, we revise probability concepts that you have learned in previous grades. Probability tells us how likely it is that some event will happen in the future. It can be expressed as decimals, fractions, and percentages. An experiment is a situation that involves chance and the results of the experiment are called outcomes. For example, tossing a coin is an experiment. The coin landing on heads is an outcome of one trial of the experiment. The sample space is the set of all the possible outcomes of an experiment. For example, the outcomes of a coin toss are the coin landing on heads or tails. The sample space is equal to H and T, where H is the outcome head and T is the outcome tail. An event is one or more outcomes of an experiment. One event of our coin toss is getting a heads. Do you remember how to calculate the probability of getting heads on a coin toss? Let's revise it together. To calculate the probability of an event when the outcomes are equally likely to occur, we divide the number of favorable outcomes by the number of possible outcomes. So the probability of getting a head is equal to 1 divided by 2, as there is only one favorable outcome out of two possible outcomes. We can also write this as 0, 0,5 or as 50%. Remember, the sum of probabilities of the possible outcomes is always 1. So the probability of getting heads plus the probability of getting tails is 1. The calculation of probability, as we just did, is called theoretical probability and is based on logic. Relative frequency, or experimental probability, is found by doing many experiments or from observations. We can get close to the theoretical probability by conducting many trials. Relative frequency is equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of trials. If we tossed an unbiased coin 100 times and got 49 heads, then the relative frequency of getting heads is 49 divided by 100, which is equal to 0, 0,49. This is also equal to 49%. Probability values always lie between 0 and 1. An event that is impossible has a probability of 0, and an event that is certain has a probability of 1. Mutually exclusive events are events that cannot happen at the same time. Eating and sleeping are examples of events that are mutually exclusive. If two events, A and B, are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. If events are not mutually exclusive, this means that they can occur at the same time. We calculate the probability for these events by using the following rule. If events A and B are not mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Do you recall what complementary events are? Complementary events are mutually exclusive, but one of them must occur in a trial. For example, getting heads when you toss a coin is the complement of getting tails. The complement of an event is written as A prime. We also refer to the complement of A as not A. The probability of A or its complement is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of not A and will always add up to 1. Let's work on this a bit more. So we can rearrange the equation to get the probability of not A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. For example, the probability of getting 6 on a dice is 1 over 6. Therefore, the probability of not getting 6 is 1 minus 1 sixth, which gives us 5 over 6. Now that you have revised the basic probability concepts, you are ready to use these concepts to help you solve probability problems. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Using Probability Task video. You'll also be able to learn more about probability on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Revise enough and soon you'll be getting compliments on your marks too.